Hey everybody! In this video, we're going to go into detail about the concept called scope. Scope is the visibility of an identifier or a name in your program. I've alluded to it a little bit in the past couple videos when I talked about local variables and when a function exits, the local variables are deallocated. Now it's time to formalize this idea of scope, deallocation, and local variables with a very extensive example which I've already written up here on the board. So our learning objectives recognize the scope of a name. I'm using name synonymous with identifier and get some practice defining and calling functions with the example that I've already coded up. So let's head over to our VM and open a file called scopefun.cpp. We're going to copy and paste this example code into scopefun.cpp so we can see some of the errors the compiler gives us when we're not properly using the scope of a name. In our last video, we talked with some detail about how programs are compiled when they have functions in them and how programs are executed when there are functions in them. So specifically, how does a function execute? When a function is called, memory for local variables is allocated. A local variable is a variable defined inside of a function. More on local variables to come. When a function finishes executing and it exits, the memory that's been allocated for local variables is released or it's deallocated. That means that local variables defined inside of a function do not outlive the function. They cannot be used anywhere outside of the function. So here's an example. Recall our display GPA function that we wrote in one of our last videos. So display GPA accepts a single argument, a double, which is stored in a parameter called GPA, and that GPA is used to display the GPA in this Cout statement. When we call this function, we pass in a value for an argument like 3.4, and this argument 3.4 is copied into the parameter GPA when this function is called. This variable GPA is local only to display GPA, meaning a parameter is really a local variable. This local variable GPA is only able to be used inside of this function. Even if you have another variable GPA defined, say, in main, those are two completely separate GPA variables, and when you refer to GPA inside of display GPA, it's referring to the parameter GPA. If you have a GPA in main and you're referring to GPA in main, it's referring to that GPA of main, not this parameter of display GPA. So this is a small example of scope, and scope is the visibility of a name. It's the region of a program where a particular meaning of a name is visible or can be referenced. When talking about scope, we'll mention local versus global scope. A variable is global if it is defined outside of a function. For example, if we wanted to, say, declare a variable for pi, and we put it right under our using namespace standard, but before a definition of a function, that pi variable would be global because it's defined outside of a function. In general, global variables are a bad idea, and at all costs, we try to avoid using them. You can take a look at this link here if you wanna read someone else's opinion about why global variables are bad beyond just my opinion that they're bad. 
But mostly to summarize, it makes your programs hard to debug because it's hard to know which function is modifying a global variable because global variables are in scope of all functions defined beneath the global variable declaration. In this class, we will use global variables only if the global variable is declared as const or constant. So we will not use non-constant global variables in this class. So the example I gave about a global variable being declared for pi, that is totally okay in this class as long as we put const on it. If const is not there, then that's considered bad practice and we don't want to use non-const global variables. If a variable isn't global, then it's local. So if a variable that's defined outside of a function is called global, a variable that's defined inside a function is considered to be local. So that includes uh, parameters like our double GPA here, this is a local variable, and just variables that are declared normally just inside of our curly braces. Those are both local variables and they are only visible inside of the function in which they're defined. Once the function exits, those variables are deallocated and they can no longer be referred to. So I think it's best to always describe kind of the theory behind something with an example. So I came up with an example to describe scope and I've listed it here. I wanna mention that this example is not an example of well-written code, uh, it's just an example for scope purposes only. So let's go ahead and copy this code and we'll paste it in our scope fun. There's no need to run this code at this point because surprisingly, this code doesn't do anything. We've got two function definitions beyond main, one called one and one called fun two, but neither one of them are ever called. If we take a look at main, we see a local variable declaration called local var, but there's no function calls. So nothing's going to happen here. but we do see that at least it compiles. But if we run it, nothing happens. Okay, so let's go through and describe whether each variable is a local or a global variable. And then we're going to work through this massive table here where we find out where each one of our identifiers, variables and functions are in scope. All right, max here is a global variable because it's defined outside of a function. One is a function, an arg, and second are local variables of one. They're also parameters because they appear in the parameter list. One local is a local variable of one because it's defined inside of the function definition for one. Fun two is a function. It has parameters one and an arg, which are local variables, and a variable called local var. Limit is a global variable. It's defined outside of a function. Main is a function. Local var is a local variable of main. Okay, so take a moment and read through this code and see if you can kind of predict where some problems might occur when dealing with scope. Okay, so I'm going to go through the first row and show you how this table works, and then I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and work through the rest of the rows in the table so you can get a good sense of how scope works, and then you can check your work with the video in order to see if you're correctly understanding scope or not. Okay, so each column here represents a function and we wanna answer yes or no. Is this name 
this identifier visible in this function? Yes or no. In this function? Yes or no. In this function? Yes or no. And I know it's a little bit hard to see because of the glare and the angle, so I'll be sure to read out loud what we're doing for each one. So let's start. Is max visible in one? Max is defined at the top of the program, which means it has visibility everywhere below it. So yes, it is visible in one. One could use max if it wanted to. Is max visible in fun two? Yes, max is declared above the definition of fun two. Is max visible in main? Yes. Max is declared above the definition for main. Now that you see how the table works, go ahead and pause the video and try filling in the rest of it on your own. Okay, let's do this. Limit. Limit is declared down here. So is limit in scope of one? No, it is not. One's definition is above the definition for limit. So this is no. Is limit in scope of fun two? No, for the same reason. Is limit in scope of main? Yes, it is. The declaration of limit is above the definition of main. So yes, for that last one. All right, main. Is main in scope of one? Meaning, could we write a statement inside of the body of one that would call main? And the answer is no. When the compiler is compiling the definition for one, it hasn't seen the definition for main, so it doesn't know about it. Same thing for fun two. This next one's kind of tricky. Is main in scope of main? Could we call main from the body of main? And the answer is yes, because by the time the compiler reaches the body of a function, it's already seen the header. So it knows everything it needs to know about how that function can be called. So yes, main is in scope of main. Local var. We have two local vars. This is the one specifically in main. This one. Is local var in main in scope of one? No. It's a local variable, so it only has scope inside the function in which it's defined. Same with fun too. But yes, it's in scope of main. It's declared inside of main. Next, moving on to one the function. Could we call one the function from the function one? Yes. This is actually the same case as trying to call main from main. Could we call one the function from fun two? Well, the definition for one is above the definition of fun two, so the compiler has encountered the definition for one before it's encountered the definition for fun two, but there's a parameter here called one. Therefore, inside the body of fun2, whenever one is used as an identifier, it resolves to the more local scope, which means it's going to resolve to the parameter one, not the function one. So the answer to this is kind of tricky, but it is no, because we've got a reuse of the identifier one. Okay, could we call one the function from main? We sure can anarg the int. So we've got anarg the int here versus anarg the char here. Okay, anarg the int. It's a parameter. It's a local variable to one. So could we use it in one? Yes. Fun two? No. Main? No. Second. Here's second. It's a parameter, a local variable of one. Yes, we could use it in one not in fun2, not in main. It's out of scope for those two functions. One local, local variable of one. 
Same thing, only visible inside of one. Fun two, the function. Is fun two in scope of one? No, it is not because the definition for fun two is below the definition for one. But we could call fun two from fun two. A little aside, calling a function from inside of a function that you're currently defining is called recursion, and you'll learn about it in Computer Science 122. We could also call fun2 from main. One, the formal parameter. So that's this guy here, not the function. It's a local variable of fun2. So we could not use it inside of one, the function. We could use it inside of fun2. We could not use it inside of main. Anarg the char, this char right here, same thing. Local variable in fun2, only visible inside of fun2. No, yes, no. Last one, local var of fun2. Same thing, only usable inside of the, var the function in which it's defined. So hopefully your table was pretty close to this table here. Scope can be kind of tricky, but it's really important to just keep practicing and questioning why do these things work? Why don't these things work? You can even make an example like we have with scopefun.cpp and just play with it. Go ahead and try to call a function, perhaps let's say fun2 from one and see if it still compiles. We get an error. That's why we entered no in the fun2 row and the one column because fun2 is not in scope of one. So you can test a lot of these out just by playing with the code over here. The last thing that I want to emphasize is how you choose your variable names. Recall that the name of a parameter does not have to match the name of the argument in the calling code. That's by choice. Just make sure you know that every time you declare a variable, that is a separate location in memory. Even if they have the same name, if they're local to different functions, completely separate in memory. And it's only coincidence that you've chosen to name those two variables the same name.